we need to ice the sides. And what we're doing to ice the sides is we're reaching over and we're kind of just pressing the icing onto it. So what I do is I do it over the cake so it's kind of a, a far away from me. I'm extending my arm all the way. So you won't be able to see it from the angle you are. But just go ahead and ice the sides of your cake. Okay, patch up any sides on the edges that, that didn't get covered very well. And go back on any thin spots. And that in that one area where the end ends, um, you're obviously going to have it sticking out a little bit because it's just the nature of a jelly roll. So compensate by adding some more icing and being really careful when you smooth out the sides so that way you don't have um, you don't have a very obvious lump. But it's okay even if you do because remember we're going to cover it up with cigarettes, the cigarette cookies. So to smooth out the sides, remember to follow the cardboard. If you need to, go up a little bit higher, but be careful. Remember that your cake is not perfectly round. Patch up any areas that you need to that I'm, you may have missed. Okay. Go back to the top and smooth it out by pushing towards the center on any of those raised edges that you have created from smoothing out the side. And then you can go back and fix the edges that are a little bit um, imperfect again just by going lightly over it. And you can spend as much time as you want fixing the cake if you want. Um, I'm not going to drive myself crazy doing that. It's up to you. So we're pretty much where we want to be. Okay, so you might remember in my previous episode, especially the blog listing, that I attempted to do a basket weave on the side of the cake with a rose tip and it was a massive failure. And so I went ahead and went back to Sally's and she uh, sold me a number 48 Wilton tip. It's a pretty good size uh, tip. It's like right in the middle of a small and a, me and a large. It's a good medium size. And so this is how to make a basket weave. She said, you don't really need two tips, just use one tip. So the first thing you wanna do, um, I'm gonna show you on here and then I'm gonna show you on the cake. Um, obviously you won't be able to turn the side like this, but just so I can show you. Draw a straight line. And remember, this only works with very firm icing. Don't try to do it if your icing is soupy. Draw a little line. Another one. Another one until you're down your cake. Then draw another line, overlapping the very ends of the lines you just drew. And then starting at the edge, the very first line you drew, draw another line. And then you kind of just want to go back and um, so then at the end of this one, draw another line. Remember you're at the ends, so you have that little gap. You always want there to be a gap because in the gap you fill it in with the next basket weave. Just like that. Okay, we're not gonna do it all the way around the cake because like I told you, we're gonna do 
the uh, cigarette uh, sticks, but I, I wanted to have a basket weave side on maybe like a quarter of the cake. So I'm going to do a whole half, and then I'm going to cover up whatever edges I don't like. And so let's go ahead and do our basket weave on the cake. So remember, start with a line. Then draw your short lines. And then at the edge of those lines you just drew, draw another straight line. And then draw another short line in each of the gaps. And then draw another straight line, long one, at the end of the ones that you just drew, the short ones. And repeat with the short ones until you've covered as much of the cake as you'd like. If you want to do the whole cake with a basket weave, go ahead. And trust me, it is not possible with a rose tip. I swear, if you can do it with a rose tip, more power to you, but I cannot. So, I'm going to go ahead and do half the cake with the um, basket weave, mostly because I don't have enough, I don't think I have enough buttercream to do the whole cake. And uh, when we come back, we'll be starting to put the cigarette sticks on. Okay, so I actually ended up finishing about a third of the cake. Um, with the basket weave. Came out pretty good. So, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare our cookies. And these are the cookies I'm going to use. Uh, the, they're called Pyroline. I think uh, this isn't this doesn't really have a brand name on it. But um, I know that Pepperidge Farm makes them and they're called uh, Pirouette. So, or maybe Pyroline is the name of the brand. Anyway, who cares, right? So, chocolate, basically cigarette cookies. Now, I could put them right this, just like this onto the cake, except they seem a little bit long. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them, and I kind of want to cut them into different heights. And so what you're basically... Sorry. What you're basically trying to do is you're trying to cover the whole rest of the cake with the pyroline cookies. Okay, so I have my whole other two thirds of the cake covered with the chocolate or the cigarette cookies, the pirouettes, the pyrolines, whatever you want to call them. Now, in the Rachel Ray recipe, she has in there, or I guess her test cooks have in there, that they piped little balls along the edges to help finish off the cake. That looks great, but if you did the basket weave, you might not have enough icing to do the whole outside, so just keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to, um, I think what I'm gonna do is, since I have so little left over, I'm gonna pipe, I'm gonna try and pipe like a shell border along it over here, just to help finish off this edge, because this looks a little unfinished right here. And then what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go ahead and put the flowers on okay, top. So for our shell border, I'm gonna use an 822 tip, and I'm gonna start right here behind this little pirouette cookie, pipe a shell. And what you're doing is you're going up and then back, kind of like, um, almost like a sideways J, kind of. So, Okay, and that's going to help finish off our cake. 
Now I have some more buttercream left over, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around the edge of the cake. Okay, and so let's go ahead and put our flowers on top. Okay, so it's the next day. We're going to put our gum paste flowers on top. Now for this cake, you don't really need to refrigerate it because it's a buttercream and there's so much sugar in buttercream that it preserves itself. But if you want, you can refrigerate it. Um, it doesn't affect the cookies. They don't get soft or anything like that, um, especially if you have it covered in a container. Um, and it helps and if you do do that make sure it warms up to room temperature before you serve it Take it out of the uh, refrigerator cool area and put it out room temperature for about 30 minutes 60 minutes and let it warm up So the icing doesn't taste like a mouthful of you know solid block of butter so to, to finish it off You can put some gum paste some of those simple Christmas roses that we did earlier on top. Now remember, if you do refrigerator, the icing is going to be a little bit harder. So it's not going to be easy to put the gum paste roses and stick them into place because it doesn't act like a glue anymore. It's basically just a solid chunk of butter. But at the same time, uh, you don't want to put your gum paste roses or gum paste flowers on before you refrigerate it because these will get soft in the refrigerator. They'll get soft and squishy and they'll lose their cup shape. Okay, and as you can see, just a very simple decoration on top can really make a, a huge difference. Um, it, you might think that it makes, it makes it look a little bit more cheesy or however, or it could actually make it look more springy and more fun and more youthful, however you want to look at it. But this is just to show you that you can use really simple gum paste flowers. You don't have to go over and beyond and make the most complicated roses to add a special touch to your, to your cake. Now, if the whole thing was done with the border tip and was done more like a basket, you could have had a ton of flowers on top and made it look, look like a flowering a basket full of flowers. Okay, so that's how to make the strawberry spiral cake. Now I know that this isn't the most winter cake. Um, like I said, it was in the Rachel Ray Winter Magazine. So I saw it, I just thought, what a great cake to make. I just had to make it right away. Um, I just really like how the layers are all vertical and I thought that was a really neat trick. And it really isn't that difficult um, to do, um, especially if you have a turntable. If you don't have a turntable, then you're gonna need to have a friend help you because you're not gonna be able to do both at the same time, turn it and put the piece on. But um, if you do want to make it more wintry, you can go ahead and try using a vanilla buttercream and then uh, using some crushed up uh, peppermint sticks, peppermint or candy canes, peppermint candies, and kind of garnish it with that. Um, just be creative and you know use uh, Christmas related decorations. I just wanted to be true to the recipes decoration. I really like the little cigarette sticks along the side. That was a really a neat idea that they came up with. And um, the basket weave came out really well, especially with this French buttercream. I'm not sure if it was because it was so pasty when we made it. Um, you know how it got really pasty before we added the butter? That um, it made it really firm. It's also winter, so it's easier to ice cakes in the winter because it's so cool. You know, your, your butter is not melting as you're working with it because it's so hot in the air. So it's actually cooler in the air. So that might have been working to our advantage. Whatever it was, 